Hello. Today we are going to discuss how to calculate the elastic constants of carbon diamond. And uh, we are going to calculate the C11, C12, and the C44 constants for it. And uh, so the major tutorial following the reference number one here. So the number one reference is listed at the end of the tutorial PDF, which is on my website. And we are going to use the Abnit DFT program to do the calculations. And uh, so first of all, we are going to uh, relax the geometry of carbon diamond. And uh, we are going to use the PAW potential from the GBRV website and uh, gonna use it with Abnit program. Uh, the input file for Abnit program is listed here for the geometry optimization of the carbon diamond uh, structure. And you can see here, I activate the geometry optimization here. I put the OPT cell equal to two, which is a full optimization of the structure, which means that it's also including optimize the lattice vectors as well. And uh, because we are using the PW uh, method, so we don't need a, a high energy kinetic energy uh, cutoff. So the E cut here is pretty low, it's only 500 uh, EV. And uh, so the carbon atoms are defined here. For the cubic diamond structure, we have uh, two atoms in a primitive cell. So that's why the n atoms e e uh, equals two. Uh, because carbon diamond is an insulating uh, material, so we use uh, a less uh, dense key point mesh, which is eight by eight by eight. Uh, PBE exchange correlation functional is used here at the initial lattice parameter is uh, 6.7 bore. By the way, by default, the unit in Abnit is in bore. Uh, the cubic diamond is defined here. That's the lattice uh, vectors. And we have two carbon atoms here. Their fractional coordinates is here, 0, 0, 0, and, a, and a quarter, quarter, quarter. So if you run this Abnit input file, you will get the relaxed geometry for this structure. And you will get this number for the lattice parameter. And we see that if you convert this ball to Anstron, it's very close to the experimental value, which is a 3.57 Anstron. Okay, so after relaxing the lattice parameter of carbon diamond structure, now we can calculate the bulk modulars. And we have discussed this in the tutorial number one, and I'm just going to skip it here. So the bulk modulars you will, you will get will be 427 gigapascal. After that, we are going to calculate the first special elastic constant in this tutorial, which is C44. Again, we are going to make a small deformation of the cell. So the deformation is defined like this. So A, B, C will be the lattice parameter of your cell. And A prime, B prime, C prime, they are the new lattice parameters after the deformation. The deformation is defined by the epsilon here. And the matrix epsilon is defined here. And uh, based on the six small deltas, delta one, delta two, all the way to delta six. Due to the symmetry of this epsilon matrix, so you only need the six delta parameters to define it. Uh, to compute C44, you just need to apply a triaxial string, which is defined as 0, 0, 0, delta, delta, delta. So which means that you will set delta one, delta two, delta three to zeros, and set as the, the delta four, delta five, delta six to the same value, delta. If you plug this zero, 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 delta, delta, delta onto, into the uh, matrix, you will get this one. Okay, so, so at the end, you just need to pick several different uh, small values for this delta, and then prepare new lattice 
parameters. So I give you a, app, a MATLAB script on my website to do this. So the script is like this. Uh, you can see that I use the equilibrium lattice constant for carbon diamond structure. And the undistorted lattice vector is defined here. And uh, so this small data I'm going to use is 0 0.005. And this epsilon matrix is defined here uh, following the definition here. In the end, you just uh, multiply this uh, undistorted lattice vector with this identity matrix plus the, the epsilon uh, matrix, then you get your distorted uh, uh, lattice vectors. So this is the distorted lattice vector you will get. So the rest calculation is very straightforward. You just do a single point DFT calculation with Abinet, but replacing your R prime here with the distorted lattice parameters. Uh, note that I set this A cell equal to 1.04 here, because in Avenit, the final lattice parameters will be the product between the A cell and R prime. So I'm only adjusting the R prime here to have the distorted uh, lattice parameter. So after this single shot calculation with Avenit, you will get the energy. Uh, in order to get the C44, you need to do this kind of calculation for several different small dart values. And here, I also did the calculation for delta equal to minus 0 0.01, 0, 0 0.005, and 0 0.01. At every time, you just uh, rerun this MATLAB script and uh, replacing this epsilon parameter, I mean, a matrix with the new dart values, and then you get this new distorted lattice parameters, and then replace it here in the input file, and then rerun the Abinit ca calculation. So in the end, you can make a, a table which lists the energy versus the data values. The C44 can be obtained by fitting this table in this way. And uh, the C44 will be the coefficient here. On my website, I also gives you a MATLAB script for this fitting. So the script is copied here. And you can see here that you just need to fill up all these energy values to the variable E here and also fill up your data values to this variable data here. And in the meanwhile, you also give the equilibrium volume for the carbon diamond structure and also the equilibrium energy for it. And these two values can be obtained from the first step uh, once you finished the geometry optimization of the carbon diamond structure. I use a least square fitting to get the C44. And to do it, you need to define uh, this function, right? And this function is defined here, this uh, C44 fit function. Okay. After the fitting, you will get the results, which is stored in C44 in MATLAB. And uh, we convert that into from the atomic unit to the SI. Because all these numbers, the energy is in Hart tree, and uh, the volume is in Bohr cubed. So that's why all the results we obtain from the fitting is in atomic uh, unit. So we convert it into the SI, which is gig uh, Pascal. And uh, you can also do the plot to see the agreement between your fitting and uh, your data points. So the program is going to tell you that your C44 in the end of the fitting is 562 gigapascal. Okay, so here is the 
calculation of the shear modulus G, which is another important lattice constant in mechanics. The G is calculated in a similar way. You just need to adopt another set of uh, deformation. So the, so the string you are going to adopt is defined in this way. You see that this is very different from the previous uh, delta vector we used uh, for the C44, which is uh, this one, right? Okay, so once you have this new definition for the deformation, and then you just plug this delta vector, delta 1, delta 2, delta 3, all the way to delta 6, to this epsilon uh, matrix, then you can again uh, deform your lattice vectors in this way by using this script I send you on my website. And you can do the calculation for different data values, and then you get the energy from Avenet. And this is the equation for fitting the G parameter. And here I, okay, so here I list this uh, energy versus the data values. And uh, I also give you the script for fitting the G parameter. This function uh, is a definition of this fitting equation here. After the fitting, the program is going to tell you that the shear modulus G is about 448 gigapascal. And it will also make the plot to show you the fitting quality as well. By using the shear modulus G and the bulk modulus B, we can combine them to get another two important lattice parameters. I mean, the lattice, uh, the elastic constant. One is the C11, another is C12. So in the end, our DFT calculation above gives us 1026 gigapascal for C11 and 128 gigapascal for C12. And if you compare, uh, compare those lattice, uh, this elastic constant we calculated with the experimental values, which are obtained from the reference two here, we will find a very good agreement between the DFT simulation and the experimental values. I hope you find this tutorial about calculating the elastic contents is helpful to your research and I'll see you uh, next time. Bye bye.